I had not necessarily expected to cry at prop culture, but that is exactly what happened, and they were tears of magic and joy. The first episode, and what a way to start this series, is all about Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins is the magic that is in my heart. It is my favourite musical, on par with Sweeney Todd. I aware they're quite polar opposites when it comes to films, but this film is everything that I love. And... I was going to discuss prop culture as a six-part series as a whole, but I have only watched this one episode and there's so much that I love about it that I just have to kind of gush about it uh, on its own. This series, though, looks like it's going to be pretty amazing if this first episode is anything to go by. So prop culture is presented by Dan Lanigan, who collects memorabilia from Hollywood, different films, you know, props, and in this episode he's going in search of Mary Poppins props and I believe this is the oldest film in the series I could be mistaken I have looked at the other film titles I think this is the oldest film so obviously there are props that no longer exist and it's really fascinating um, to kind of think about the fact that back in the day there was no fan culture as such there was no hunger for displays of props and memorabilia so they didn't care about them they didn't keep them in good condition unfortunately certain props from the film are just missing and i'd love i'd really love to know where some of them are but this is pretty fascinating as as dan goes on this journey to try and discover them and this introduces us to some pretty fascinating people who were involved with Mary Poppins, the film, the filming of it. One of my favourite was seeing Richard Sherman. The Sherman brothers were, of course, responsible for the songs from Mary Poppins. And there's this most beautiful, magical, emotional moment where he's in Walt Disney's office um, at Disney. There is a, well, it's Walt's office restored to as it was and his original piano. And apparently Richard Sherman is the only person ever to be allowed to actually play this piano and that's beautiful but also quite emotional because obviously once he unfortunately passes on Walt Disney's piano will never be played again and there is a snow globe we look at the snow globe and various other props from the show that I'm not going to mention I think part of the element of the surprise is you know wondering what props they're going to find next but also getting to see Walt Disney's office was pretty incredible now that I think about it they did replicate that pretty well for Saving Mr Banks which is a film that I absolutely love um we get to meet Dee Dee Wood who choreographed a lot of the dances while it discusses a lot of the props we also get behind the scenes information she talks about how she basically danced like a penguin in order to teach Dick Van Dyke um, a lot of the moves that both he and the Penguins during Jolly Holiday would be doing. And you can see the emotion when she talks about that experience. And there's this really beautiful moment, and slightly welling up, where she mentions a certain prop and then something happens immediately after and just the glow in her eyes is spectacular you know to us as fans of Mary Poppins it's absolutely incredible to see these artifacts but for those who were involved in this magical journey that would have been such an incredible experience to have that tangible piece of their own history presented to them is just you know it's so emotional to see and and it's absolutely fantastic and I was particularly amazed to see Karen Dutrice in this. Um, I, you know, Jane Banks is one of my favourite Disney characters ever. And to see her recounting those memories is just beautiful. Dan Lanigan has a very, um, very warm and inviting approach to, I was going to say interviewing the guests on this episode, but it's not an interview. It's a conversation. And the way he speaks is like he's known these people for years and years, not in a disrespectful way but in a way that just makes you feel instantly comfortable. It's not stiff, it's not rigid, it's magical and heartfelt. And you can feel his passion. You can feel his passion for discovering these props. 
um, there's a beautiful uh, look at the molds that were used for the parrot on the umbrella. I actually have one of those umbrellas bought from you know the West End when Mary Poppins was at the West End, and it's it's just magical. I won't tell you all of the props that are in this, and I won't go on about this for any longer. But it's not just a look at the props. We get to have anecdotes from people who were involved in the film, from people who remember Walt Disney at the time, and other little facts as well. There's an interesting fact about a merry-go-round, which I won't go into. And ultimately, if you're a fan of film, you will love this. Dan Lanigan invites you into this so easily. It's directed by Jason C. Henry. As a fan of Mary Poppins, it it made me very emotional. And because it's not just a film. For many of us, it's our childhood, the magic from her childhood, but also an escape. I know a lot of people escape into that film when reality is difficult and the songs are uplifting, they're beautiful, they're sorrowful and it's just, it's absolutely splendid. And this episode, to kickstart prop culture, could not have been more perfect. 